truth is, I am Iron Man. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose. I love comic books. I love talking about them. I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like. Links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the Marvel database for the story with plot synopsis and character bio. So we're looking at Iron Man 217 by David Michelini with Bob Layton as his co-plotter returning to, in my opinion, the best Iron Man um, period. But some would disagree. That's okay. Matt Fraction actually had an excellent run um, in the um, early 2000s um, with uh, Salvador La Roca. And I eventually hope to cover that when I get to more modern superheroes. Um, so Matt Fraction's run, I think, is uh, number two in this, uh, in, in the Iron Man totality. So um, Bob Layton and David Michelini, or Michelini as some people call him, have returned to the Iron to the Silver Centurion armor. We see this great cover here. Um, it was a brush of fresh air. Um, I don't know what else to say. So I have covered the um, some of the Silver Centurion. Kind of skipped over um, a big portion, but kind of got going. Uh, right before the run here uh, with Bob Layton. So, all right. So I didn't cover, basically I didn't cover the Denny O'Neill uh, portion, but I hope to eventually maybe get to it someday. It it, uh, it definitely deserves a, a listen. So, all right, here we go. Um, Target Stark Enterprises. So, and the title is uh, Metamorphos Metamorphosis oddity so um and we see here tony um kind of you are superimposing the iron man armor here so time heals all wounds or so they say but in the week since the death of his partner and friend clytemestra Irwin, millionaire inventor anthony stark has had to help time out a bit by throwing himself into his work by forcing himself to believe that what happened doesn't hurt anymore by pretending. So here we have our um, our credits. It's not a very exciting. Uh, normally, if splash pages, you definitely want some action in there, but. Uh, that's all right. I still picked up this this book right off the right off the shelf. So, according to this schematic, the changes I'm considering in my defense systems of my Iron Man armor should work out just fine. After all, there's no sense in keeping the chameleon effect circuitry, circuitry since I found that using it causes degenerative nerve damage. Unfortunately, Doctor Cordy says I'm healing nicely, and there should be no permanent injury. So. And we have we did cover those issues, so check out the playlist. But I won't be using the chameleon effect again until I can do a lot more research on it. So I might as well remove those circuits and try something else. Or, hmm, he thinks, maybe even trim the armor a bit. I'll have to take it to the heavy-duty labs in the sub-basement to do the actual modifications when I've got the time. But, uh, speaking of time... And so, b before the days of the Apple Watch memo press conference at 11 a.m., isn't that something? Uh, the Apple Watch before the Apple Watch in 1987. So, great panel here, kind of giving you the setting of where everything is uh, taking place. I have all these issues, but they are tethered to pieces. I have read them and read them and read them and read them. I haven't read them in years, but I got these when I was a teenager. So, uh, 
they are well no i wasn't even a yeah maybe i was a preteen during this man i i um i'd even bag and board my comics uh if you look at my tiktok videos you'll see my mcfarland hulks and spider-man how tattered they are but i love them the comic books are meant to be read not put in slabs so for those of you who have them in slabs there's this channel so you can at least look at the pretty pictures that you decided to put in a slab so all right so we continue it's convenient having my living and working quarters close together again and this penthouse view is spectacular but I'll still be glad when my new permanent resident on the Pacific coast is completed so I'll finally have some place to get away from the daily ground grind sorry I started with the ground floor so Voice print confirmed, beginning descent, so soon in the reception area below. But I thought my appointment was for Mr. Columby said I should. Excuse me, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Stark says the secretary. The catering got hung up on the freeway, but they're here and setting up and th setting things up now. They should be ready soon. He says, thank you. Miss Williams is a wonderful secretary, but what this place is needs is a full-time people tamer and i think i know who might fit the bill if you read uh their first run you should know who he has in mind but for now it's time to face the music and the public ladies and gentlemen of the press welcome today we begin a great adventure one which i fe uh, fervently hope will profit us both as well as the very planet we live upon so Basically, now I'm not going to read all this, but he is essentially um, wanting to share his discoveries with um, the world and announce that he is going to recreate Stark Enterprises. Great building, by the way. Um, the design. Mark Bright should have been an architect. So please help yourselves to refreshments. Take some time to read through the brochures in your press kits. And if there's are any further questions, I'll be happy to. And suddenly, Iron Man, he's like, what? What about Iron Man? He had he was such an effective publicity tool in the in your New York operations. Do you plan to utilize him here? And he's like, ooh, that was a perfect perceptive observation, Miss Pearson, Marcy Pearson, Independent News Services. Tell me, Miss Pearson, how much do you earn a year? How? I'm comfortable, thank you. Why? Because I like to to make you twice as comfortable. SE, meaning Stark Enterprises, needs someone to head his public relations department. Just like that, because you asked him a question. And, I, and you intrigue me. Would you consider the position at, say, double your current salary? Mr. Stark, you know nothing about me, she says. I know you're intelligent. You asked the right question. She asked one question for the love of God. All right. Um, you've got the most incredible brown eyes I've seen today. Lunch at a half an hour. And so the lady smiles. The appointment is set. All right. <laughs> you asked the <laughs> God. I, I know that. I Okay. So I understand that it's it's. It's a comic book. You only got 22 pages to kind of tell the story. But it's just, it's so funny to how how these things go sometimes. Sometimes it, it amazes me. I always have a phrase, comic books, don't overthink it. And I, and I always end up doing it. But it's just funny. <laughs> All right. And moments later at a small private airfield that service, or sorry, serves Stark Enterprises. We got Jim here. Okay, start her up. Hello, Rhodey. I see the new toy arrived. Sure did, Chief. Thanks again for springing for the new chopper. Hey, a top pilot deserves top gear. Besides, after the way you saved my bacon in that battle with AIM, and then, of course, AIM means advanced idea mechanics, this was the least I could do. So, you can see them unloading. By the way, how are the new, how are the burns? I'm a little stiff, but I'm glad to be back on my feet. What about you, Chief? Losing the space station and the shuttle and having someone you trusted betray you and then die for it 
that's bound to leave a few scars that don't show. But I do miss Clyde Jim. But as long as I've got my work and my friends, I'll get by. See you later, Ace. I have some uh, job recruiting to do. So long, Chief. Yo, Eddie, about done? Heading home, pal. We'll have this crate open faster than you can say. Airwolf. And so Airwolf was a show in the 80s about a helicopter, which is what we got here. So, And he goes, whoa, doesn't look at all like the pictures in the catalog. It's awesome. And they're like, uh, Mr. Rhodes, what's this? A note from the manufacturer says they sent a newer model at no extra cost. It looks like they're uh, greasing us for future business. And so, could be. Note says that hope we won't be disappointed with this substitution. Disappointed, right. Like, I'd be disappointed if I ordered a Yugo and got a Porsche. So. And so here, of course, speaking of Porsches. I like, I see you like to drive as fast as you work, Mr. Stark. Driving fast gets me where I want to go, Miss Pearson. Working fast gets me what I want. I hope you don't mind this little detour. I promised my foreman I'd check on the progress of my new house. And she says, not at all. Wow, maybe I should ask for triple my salary, she says. So this is kind of like the house that the movie was based on. So how's it going, Kelly? Right on schedule, Mr. Stark, he says. Having Iron Man cut into the bedrock of the cliff to clear... The air for your laugh saved us about a month. Glad to hear it. I'll check back again in next week. So I hope you didn't I didn't keep you waiting too long. Well, as a financial as a financial reporter, I do spend way too much time sitting in thirty thousand dollar sports cars, but I'd live to I've but I've learned to live with it. Thirty thousand back in nineteen eighty seven and these things now cost a hundred and plus thousand dollars, so $30,000 in 1987. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Somebody go to Google. Just should go to Google and find out what that is in dollars. Because I'm not going to do that at this moment. So. All right. So back to Jim Rhodes here. Whew, I've almost got this lady flight ready. But she sure is sophisticated. Got circuitry I've never even seen before. And the worst part is. The blasted instructions are in Japanese. Hey Kyoshi. Come here a minute. Will ya? So. And bring your reading glasses. So, meanwhile, at one of Southern California's most famous tourist attractions, you can see the Mickey ears. What do you say sold out? Freight so, Mr. Griswold from, um, oh my gosh, I forgot the name of uh, National Lampoon's Vacation. But to whom? An Invisible Man uh, convention? There's no one there. Nevertheless, sir, the park is sold out for today. I don't believe this. Ah, oh, heck with him. I'd rather see Wally World anyway. So, toasting champagne with coffee, I can accept, Tony, but renting the entire Disney theme park for a private lunch, don't you think that's a bit extravagant? And he says, I hate crowds. So, besides, I learned long ago that most things in life don't last. You've got to always go for the best. And judging from the qualifications you quoted over the escargots, you're the best person for the job I'm offering. How about it? Well... Like my big brother always used to say, Tony, my mama didn't raise no fools. Welcome to Stark Enterprises, Marcy. So, this thing's called an adapter, short for adaptive helicopter, which no, don't know exactly what that means, but I might as well fire up and find out. And he's like, huh, door's closing, but I didn't. Hey, wait a minute. The controls aren't responding on at all. What the sweet heavens is going on? And so suddenly the helicopter kind of starts transforming or just uh, shedding some stuff. But it looks kind of like transforming here. Uh, now she's sprouting guns and legs. This sucker is about as kosher as ham on rye. Eddie, get a hold of the boss, yells uh, um, Rody now. And so as... Uh, Tony kept talking with Marcy here. He gets the beep and says uh, emergency code red. So 
You'll have to forgive me, Miss Pearson. It's more urgent than I thought. Please finish your meal. Armand makes a superb mousse. So he then says, call a limo for the lady. Will you, Maurice, and keep the change? A week's salary. My pleasure, sir. I'm sorry to cut the afternoon short, Miss Pearson. I'll be in touch about the peculiars of the job. Certainly. Too bad. Tony's a fascinating man, but I assume this is an emergency. I just hope for the si for his sake that he doesn't get stuck in traffic. Oh, sorry, rush hour traffic. And so, there he goes. It's kind of funny here. He grabs the suitcase because during this time, the Iron Man armor had to be carried in, in the suitcase. Because <laughs> they do so much better now with the whole... Um, Oh, what was it? Warren Ellis, um, the Extremis armor, I believe it was, or something like that. But, all right. So the Stark security are, is shooting at it, but it's not working. And Rhodey's like, the the controls are not working either. And uh, there it is, crushing out cars. And this guy's like, uh, brace yourself, Mr. Road. Maybe another machine can stop it, but... Um, it shoots at it, but luckily he gets out, and Iron Man saves him. So one of the great things that I love about Bob Layton is his use of screen tones. He's not the only person that uses screen tones. Lots of inkers use screen tones, but he uses them to enhance some of the shading and the armor. And the other thing that I love is the little three dots. And if you can even see here on the screen tone, he adds them here as well. Just adds uh, like a shine to it. So, all right. So, Iron Man's about to see if he can uh, um, stop this thing. But uh, Rhodey stops and says, this adapter activator when I turned on the electrical system. It's about all I know, except that it's been programmed to head straight for the administration building. And so, again, love. When I, um, I've um i done several sketches of Iron Man, and I add screen tones to all of them, like Bob Layton does right there. It's just, um, it's a trope of his, and I, um, I just like it so much. So, anyway, it, uh, Iron Man tells everyone to evacuate. So... Um, he says, whoever designed that thing was smart enough to make sure there was someone on board before it started up. I can't attack directly without killing the pilot. Now it's using Magnus to climb the side of the building. What's next? Oh, it stopped about halfway up. Brody, what's going on? You ain't gonna like this, Shellhead, and I'm not too thrilled myself. The machine just activated a self-destruct sequence. She's gonna blow in 60. So... Make that 58 seconds. Blast. I have no choice. Hold on, Rhodey. I have to use reverse magnetism to try to pry the ah, pry the chopper from the building. It worked. The self-destruct light's gone out, but uh-oh. Uh and he's like, what? And so, of course, it transforms itself. The legs turning into glider panel, jet blades, rotor blades sweeping forward. Um, So it's now going to use kind of like an airplane thing. So... Uh, she's zooming right back at the building. Got to move fast. Repulsor blast should take care of those rat rotors, and they should, and that should buy us some time. So hang on, Rody. I've got to get a little rough. So, but nothing he does seems to work. Again, look at the the screen tones, and it just Bob Layton is made to ink Iron Man. Pencil it, draw it, just, but, at you know, he should always ink Iron Man, regardless of whether he doesn't pencil it or not. So, Jim's trying to take this this uh, thing apart. It's not working. Uh, Iron Man's doing all he can. It's not working. So, no can do. The bird's uh, bucking so much. All I can see is a bunch of blurs. Then I guess I'll have to stop it another way. And uh, he says, sure hope there's a plan B to the this plan, big guy, because I'm falling fast. So um, he's going to try to catch it. But this thing is uh, 
pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good. So, so you can see it's kind of digging itself. So, and uh, this lady's got more moves than a transformer. So the adapter is moving underground. According to my sensors, headed straight for the power plant in the basement of the administration. If it's self-destruct, it would take the whole complex with it. So, Tony, of course, sees that employees are still getting out, so he's trying to do everything he can as fast as he can. So, and Jim's ready to sacrifice himself for for everyone, so... Rhodey says at the first chance he gets, destroy this thing, whether he's in it or not, because he's not worth everyone else dying. So, and so you can see that the thing is coming through. So, that thing is uh, just there waiting. And uh, he tells Iron Man, do it. Now, great, by the way, before we continue here. Um, he says, I'm sorry, Jim, but look at this panel. Look at this. Um, he's using uh, these screen tones that s appear to get darker the more it goes. So there's like a variance, but just wonderful. And him putting the ice there. Oh, just this whole panel. Um, what? That's a great money shot, even if it's just contained in a panel. So, And so he pulls the the uh the things he's like i'm dead anyway might as well um might as well try everything and he pulls back he's like the adapter it stopped so um he pulls Rody out and he says Rody, are you okay just swell chief but i gotta say this was a heck of a present what are you gonna get me next a condo in chernobyl this is of course during the time that chernobyl uh blew up in russia so although it didn't really uh blow up but you know what I mean. And so we got an epilogue some days later. So some time has passed here. An excellent job, Miss Pearson. Your press release about the adapter incident satisfied public curiosity without portraying SE in a negative light. Good work. Thank you, sir. That release was also artfully vague, hiding the fact that we still don't know who was behind the hole. And so he gets a phone call. He says, yes, Anthony, how are you? The voice is soft, dangerously soft, like the poison sack of a scorpion. Hello, Hammer. So, please, Anthony, just call me Justin. We may be rivals, but we can still be civil. And, of course, this was during um, their first run together. And, and uh, so, um, at least a, uh, close to about 100 issues before. I'm told you received my little surprise, the adapter. Just my way of welcoming you back to the world of commerce, or a boy. Stark International was a bit of a thorn on my side. I suggest you keep Stark Enterprises from becoming one. Else, the adapter may be the least of your worries. Do have a pleasant day, hmm? And he hangs up. Thanks for the warning, Justin. I got one for you. Try something like that again, and the thorn on your side might just turn out to be a whole mother loving tree. So, next, deep trouble. So, this concludes our issue. Iron Man 217 from 1987, Bob Layton, Mark Bright, and uh, David Michelini as the scripter. So I, I always give Bob Layton credit first. So if you heard some squeaking, that was my dog who came in. So anyway, like and subscribe, and I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.